Can you find your favorite photos in 15 to 20 seconds? If not, you may want to consider using folders or albums to organize your photos. Let's talk about that today on Tuesday Tech Training. There are multitudes of options of ways to organize your photos out there, especially in this digital age where most of us have digital photos and that's how we do most of our picture taking. Today we'll focus specifically on folders and albums and using those to organize your photos. I choose those because throughout the years that has been one of the best options for my clients and for myself and it really hasn't changed. Although the way it looks has changed, using folders and albums still seems to be the best way for most people to best understand the organization of their photos. Let's dive in by first talking about where your photos are going to live in the first place. As there are multiple different ways to organize your photos, there's also multiple different places that you can house them. I'll name off a few of them. You could keep them just in a cloud and that's online. So through some kind of program like iCloud or Amazon Photos or something like that. Another option is to keep them all on your computer. A third option might be to put them all on an external hard drive. All of these are valid options and a combination of them is usually the best option for most people. What you're looking at right now is if you chose to keep your pictures on your computer and you had a PC. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a Mac to show you, but it's very similar. The, it just looks a little bit different, but it's the same wording. So you can see here that your PC is automatically going to have a pictures folder. That is where it will try to save your pictures. So it's best to work with the computer if that's where you're choosing it to save your photos. In a moment, we'll talk about the different ways that you could create folder structures within that location. But that's the key right now is deciding what is that location. Is it going to be on your computer like we just looked at? Or for me, let me give you an example of what I do. My oldest photos live on an external hard drive because I don't really need to access them very often. They are organized in the same way as what I have in my other locations, but they are on an external hard drive. I keep them away from my computer. I keep them in a fireproof safe. And that is just in case anything should happen to my computer, to my house, then my external hard drive should still be safe, hopefully. The other pieces that I do are my most recent photos I keep on my phone and then I have them backed up to a cloud. And in my case, I use Samsung Cloud because I have a Samsung phone. Many of you probably use iPhones and so you would be using iCloud as a backup for your most recent photos. That is what most people will do for recent photos. I also have some photos that are in between. They're about five to three years old, something like that. And I still access them a lot, but I don't want to put them on the external hard drive and put them away. And I don't want to keep them all on my phone because it takes up too much space. So I choose to keep those at Amazon Photos. Now I have an Amazon Prime account, which makes Amazon Photos an unlimited uh, free option, if you will. It's a part of the Prime package. And so in this case, I choose to keep those in between photos in that location so that I can access them very easily through the Amazon app, but it is not taking up room on my phone. I take them from my phone and put them in Amazon Photos, and then I actually have that synced to my computer. And for those who don't understand what that means, the Amazon Photos is a cloud. It's that online option I talked about earlier. And you can have many of those, actually I think most of those, you can have that sync to your computer. So it lives on your computer and it lives in that online space. And that way you have a backup of it. So you have two places that your photos are living so that they can be a little more safe. And so that's what I like to do is make sure that my photos are always in at least two places. As you can see, there are a lot of options and a lot of combinations that you can create from this. So that's why you want to think in advance, where are, am I going to keep my photos? Have that plan in place. And then the next piece is figuring out how you're going to access them. You could be accessing them through your computer. You could be accessing them through your phone. And there are different programs that will show you different views of your photos. So we'll look at that next. 
Here is an example of one of the programs that many of you have access to. This is the Windows Photos or the Microsoft Photos program. What this does is when you open it, it looks into your computer and finds all of the photos no matter where they are. Now, when you organize things in the program, it is not doing anything with the folders on your computer. That's something to keep in mind. Your folders and your photos will stay wherever they are on your computer, but this program gives you a really easy way to see them all. And as you can see, it's putting them in chronological order, so it can be really easy to find what you need. And you can change your views in here. And then here is where you have the option of seeing all of your photos, or then you can drill down into albums. And in this case, this is not how I choose to access my photos, so I don't have very much in here. But this is where we're gonna talk about the folders versus the albums. It's the same idea, but it depends on whether you're on your computer with the folders or whether you're in one of these programs and it might be called albums instead, but it's the same idea. You're basically creating a folder or a grouping of these photos. And let me show you what this looks like if you're using a Mac. If you choose to use the Apple Photos program, this is the type of thing that you will see. You can see it has the same type of things. It's set up a little bit different, but the navigation's on the left-hand bar, whereas in the Windows Photos, it was on the top. And so you just wanna look around and familiarize yourself with whatever program you choose. If this is very overwhelming for you, then maybe you just wanna do a basic folder structure. Any of these options is the right answer if it works for you. Now that you have a good idea of places where you can access your photos, let's talk about the actual organization of those photos. I'm going to talk about it in terms of folders because that's what I tend to use, but the same thing, everything I say will also work for using albums because again, it's a very similar thing. It just looks a little bit different and you'll be using a program if you're creating albums. As you're deciding how to create your folders or your albums, think about what the function is of your photos. How are you going to use them? How do you need to access them? Is it based on people? Is it based on years? Is it based on events? That's what we want to think about because you can organize in any of these ways or a combination. First, we'll talk about the years. That's what most people gravitate towards and it makes sense for a lot of reasons. This is as simple as creating the album for the year, and then if you don't take a lot of photos, you might just dump all of your photos in there for that year. Nothing wrong with that. You could break it down then by months if you take a lot of photos, you wanna do it that way. Or as you can see here on the upper left, I typically do a year and then maybe an event. And I'll show you later exactly how I do it. I do a combination of some of these things. But as you can see, there's all different ways to do this. Now we'll flip the idea, and instead of thinking it from the year point of view, think about it if you have the same event every year. Let's say you have a booth that you run and you take pictures of it every year from a business standpoint, or maybe you go to the botanical garden every year like I do, or you have a family reunion that happens every year. You can then organize by event, and it doesn't even have to be every year, even if it's every two or three years or something like that. If you want those pictures grouped in a way where you can access all of the family reunion pictures through the years, then this is going to make more sense for you. That's why I always say think about it in advance. What's the function of your pictures? How are you going to use them? Because that will then lead you in the direction of how you want to organize them. Another way that you could organize photos, and again, you can use a combination of these, but another way you could do it is what my best friend likes to do. She loves genealogy. And so she and I had a really good talk about how to organize those things. And I recommended doing it by family name. Or if you're someone who has grandkids or kids or whoever it is in your life, you might want to have it by first name. And again, with the genealogy, it would be probably more family names, last names that you would group people together by. Or you could even have the last name, and then within that you have the first names. Again, combination, think about this outside of the box. It doesn't have to be a certain way. It's whatever makes the most sense for you. 
And as an example of how you might be doing a few different things, let's say you like genealogy, so you have a part of your pictures that are set up that way, but then you have your typical family vacations. And so that's set up maybe by a year or maybe by the event, whatever makes sense for you. Of course, as a digital organizer, I am always asked how I organize my photos. So here's kind of an example of what I like to do. And as things have gotten more and more digital, I actually use the year folders and then put a lot of these things in the year folders. So I've even gone a step beyond what you see here. You can see I, I use a combination of the year and an event. Even now, I started to use a full date with the event. And again, whatever makes the most sense to you is what you should do. Lastly, I wanna briefly talk about the other options that you would have available to you. If you're organizing on your computer and using folders, most of this won't apply, but it's nice to know if you choose to use one of the programs like the Apple Photo Program or the Windows Photo Program. With those, they have face recognition as an option, so you can organize by people. This kind of creeps some people out, and that would be me as well, <laughs> decide how comfortable you are with that. Uh, just know that those programs do live only on your computer. That's one option, is to have it organized by people based on the face recognition, and the programs do a pretty good job of that. Another option is to use tags. And for those who aren't familiar with that, you can have a person's name as a tag, you could have a location, you could have an event, any of those things could be tags. And so you could choose to tag your photos and you can do a big group of them at once so you don't have to sit there and do every single photo. But you could do tags to organize. And sometimes that can be nice if you just wanna dump your pictures in there, tag them all and then you can access them by searching. That's the main thing with tags is you wanna search the tag that you used. There are so many options out there to think about where are your photos gonna live? How are you going to access them? What's the function of your photos? And that will drive you in a certain direction. Good luck to you with your photo organizing project. And if you have any questions or any light bulb moments from this training, please let me know in the comments section below this video. Also, please give the video a thumbs up or share it with someone that you know could benefit from the information. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below so that you can find out about new videos as they're posted. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.